Last week, again, because God is in control, God is almighty, God is sovereign. Last week, the imam could not meet me. So I spent about two hours with several converts who knew nothing about the Christian faith and knew nothing about Islam. The right-hand man was upset because he saw he virtually knew nothing about Islam and he knew nothing about the Holy Bible. He told the imam what's going on and the imam said, come back this Wednesday, which I did. And he'd engage me. Well, glory to Jesus Christ. Two divinely ordained meetings. The place was rocked. God showed up in a mighty way. The Holy Spirit just anointed that place. The people saw that their imam, they thought was a scholar, basically knew absolutely nothing about his own religious tradition. It was a glorious event. I was nothing but loving, respectful, but passionate and in his face and did not let him back down or run away with pat answers or falsehoods. He actually admitted to so many things and I even highlighted it for the rest of the people. Did you hear what he said? I went there so that God would use me to open his heart but specifically for the converts to Islam. Let me give you a synopsis of what he admitted in front of everyone. Black Knight was there. I got him to admit that Muslims can go to the grave of Muhammad, a dead man buried in his grave, and talk to him and pray to him and ask him to pray for them. He admitted. He said, well, they're not dead. They're alive. I got him to admit in front of everyone that even in their mosques, they greet Muhammad in their prayers when they say to him five times a day when they pray in tashahud, Assalamu alayka ayu nabi, meaning peace be upon you, O Prophet. Now, guess what? I got the Imam to admit it was truly Holy Spirit ordained. The Holy Spirit just filled us. I walked away elated like I did last week because I knew the Holy Spirit showed up for the glory of Jesus Christ. Okay, now, what's the point of me mentioning that? He said, When we Muslims say in our five daily prayers, Tashahud, where they say, peace be upon you, O Prophet, and the mercy of Allah, rahmatullah wa barakatuh, and the mercy of Allah and his blessing. We're not really speaking to Muhammad. We're repeating what Allah said to Muhammad. We're repeating what Allah said to Muhammad when Muhammad visited Allah. Okay, now why is this interesting? Because I said, peace be upon you. Isn't that a dua? A dua? Dua is the Arabic word for supplication, invocation. He said, yes. I go, so you admit that Allah makes dua to Muhammad. He goes, yes, but it's not like our dua. He embarrassed himself because folks, dua, the Arabic word, D-U-A in transliteration, Muhammad says at dua, the invocation is al ibada is worship. Worship is dua, dua is worship. And he admit Allah made dua to Muhammad. And it went over his head. And they're seeing their imam, whom they told me is a scholar, getting schooled by the power of the Holy Spirit in a very loving, respectful way. And he was a very kind guy. I pray in Jesus' name he gets saved. No, they were rocked, uh, Dina. They were really troubled. It's going to get worse. I go, now let's talk about the ruh, the spirit. So I took him to chapter 19, verses 16 to 21, where Allah sent his spirit to appear as a man, a perfect-looking man, to give Mary a faultless son. Then I went to chapter 66, verse 12, and I said, can you tell people, guys, this is going to really floor you, and ladies are listening. The ladies are listening. Watch this. This is going to floor you. This is going to amaze you. I'm actually rejoicing in the spirit. I said, Surah Al-Tahreem, chapter 66, verse 12. It says, and Mary, the daughter of Imran, and I said, ah, sanat farjaha. What does farj mean? Without hesitation, he goes, private part. He's without hesitation. He goes, private part. So I go, and when it says, Ahsanat Farjaha, and then it says, Allah breathe blue, Fihi. What's Fihi? He said, into her. I go, no. You know Arabic. Fihi, he is him. What does it refer to? He goes, the womb. I go, no. It doesn't refer to the womb because he didn't mention the womb. You just said what it mentioned. Farj. He goes, yeah. And I go, what is Farj? Private part. So your Quran is saying that Allah blew, and I said it, blew into Mary's private part. He goes, well, yeah. He goes, yeah, that's what it says. And I said, the word fudge, he thought it's a feminine noun. I go, no, it's not. It's masculine. He goes, oh, yeah, you're right. And now they're seeing their imam being corrected by me who knows Arabic. He knows Arabic, and I'm correcting him. So he admitted to everyone 
Allah blew his spirit into Mary's private part. And then here's where it really gets amazing. His right-hand man, that agnostic who became a Muslim in his stupidity and ignorance and made Jesus save him. I could tell he was sitting to his right and I could see him and he had a face mask. I could tell by his face, he's angry, he is ticked and he's agitated and he's depressed because his hero, his imam, who's telling me all oh, the imam knows, was getting school and he was getting, and I looked at him and I looked and I go, you heard that, right? I just want you to remember that. He goes, yeah, so what? I go, so what? Your God blows into a woman's private part. So what? I'm like, okay, we'll get back to that. I made sure he heard it. Now the ladies are to my left. I can't look at their faces. I don't want to make it obvious. Only the Lord knows what the ladies to my left are thinking to hearing this. So then we get into the spirit being, being the creator and life giver. He says, no, 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 no. Uh, it doesn't mean the spirit gave. Didn't, it doesn't mean the spirit created. It means that Allah is creating and the spirit is announcing it. Maybe that's not what it says. And he says, for instance, Gabriel, the Holy Spirit. So we went into discussion about that. I go, you just said Gabriel's the Holy Spirit. Can you show me in your crown? And by the way, he spent a 10 minute spiel, 10 minutes. And here, Black Knight will confirm it. 10 minute spiel. Yes, you can't just interpret the Quran linguistically. You can't just look at the Arabic grammar. That's not how I interpret the Quran. You must go to the tafsir. And he simply gave it to me. I, th I was thinking, my, thank you, Lord Jesus. Because every time he tried to explain, I go, wait, you said we cannot explain it on our own our own interpretation, and we can't explain it linguistically. We must go to tafsir. You're giving me your explanation. Let me give you Ibn Kathir. And they got upset at Allah praying. No, it doesn't mean Allah prays. Sully doesn't mean that. He goes, Sully means peace. But he no, it doesn't. Sully doesn't mean peace. Salam means peace. And then anyway, he got intimidated, and then he stopped me, by the way. Black Knight was there. He goes, you know what? You know, before we go any further, we, we need to give other people a chance to ask questions. Remember that black knight, Mike's exaggerating? He was getting hot under the collar and didn't want me to keep asking. Yeah, and I, met, I brought up 3356. So he looked around, asked people, have any questions? And they were all dumbfounded because they were in a state of shock. They didn't know what to ask. So he's like, any questions? And no one's answering. And so he had no choice but to come back to me. So he told me had about seven, eight minutes. So we spent that time showing Gabriel is not the Holy Spirit. And he tried. Oh, and where he got corrected as well, he kept telling me the ruh, Allah breathed the, the, the soul into Mary. I go, no, that's not what it says. I go, it says ruh, the spirit. Allah blew his spirit into Mary because that's the spirit who created the physical body, human nature of Christ. He goes, no, ruh means soul. I go, no, it doesn't. I go, the Arabic word for soul, and you know this better than me, is nafs. Nowhere in the Quran does it say human beings have a spirit, a ruh. It says humans have a nafs, a soul, and they are nafs. Can you show me where it says they have a ruh, a spirit? And can you show me where ruh means soul? It's same thing as nafs. And he didn't know what to do because every example, and he was reciting. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, this verse, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, doesn't say that. Oh, uh, brother, can you look? Uh, he was discombobulated. Let me tell you what his right hand man did. And he got embarrassed because the Lord set him up for him to ask me this in front of the ladies. He goes, There's a verse in chapter 43, Ammi, Ammi, which means riding calves. That's what he says, about cows. He goes, But Ammi also means breasts. So if we do what you're doing and insisting on one meaning of the word, that means we will all ride breasts. I said, number one, you're begging the question because you're assuming the word ruh, spirit, does refer to the soul. Stop begging the question, prove it. And I go, ironically, secondly, ironically, that's exactly what you're going to be doing in paradise with the whores of paradise. And I said it out loud. Chapter 78, 33, it says, you will deflower women with swelling breasts with firm breasts that don't sag. So you're going to be riding these horries whose breasts are firm and swelling and they don't sag. You're going to spend all eternity deflowering them. So it's ironic you would say that because that's in your Quran, 7833. And I made sure I said it out loud for the ladies to hear. What's good, y'all? Welcome back to another video. Shalom, my friend. Shalom. Man, God bless Sam Shimon. 
God bless Sam Shimon. I pray for, you know, patience. I pray for love. I pray for meekness as he, you know, is sharing the gospel daily. Probably doing it right now as I'm doing this. <laughs> right? And, you know, just God bless him, man. So I wanted to check out a few things, right? Uh, how does other religions or other worldly ideologies attain heaven? Because... The importance of what Sam Shimon is doing while he's doing that, there's going to be many critics of him, you know, for example, in Islam, who make fun of him, call him a liar, this and that. But they don't really realize why we're doing this, because it's the only doctrine that could save our soul is the only doctrine that's telling us that we can't save ourselves. Every other religion or ideology is saying that, bro. Let's check out Buddhism first, right? One can attain nirvana only from the human level where Buddhist discipline can be practiced. What does that even mean? What does that even mean? And the Maha, Ma, Mahayana Buddhist tradition of North and East Asia added further considerations. The goal of nirvana was replaced by attaining Buddhahood, right? What does this even mean? The Buddha grew up in a hood like let's find out the purpose of Buddhist faith and practice is to achieve the life state of a Buddha. Right. By chanting. I'm not chanting this craziness to the Gohu with faith and striving to carry our practice for oneself and for others. Anyone can achieve the state of Buddhahood or enlightenment in this lifetime. Notice what this is saying. You got to do some type of chant. Then you got to go to go Goku with faith, striving to carry out practice for oneself. Man, what? And notice, it's attaining nirvana. And we all know what the nirv nirvana is, right? Let's let's Google it real quick so we all can know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nirvana and oh, it's Hinduism and Buddhism. Wow. Um. So nirvana is. Wait, no. Hold on. Let's actually get a definition, bro. Where is the like? Where is, dang, all I get is Wikipedia? My gosh. So it says right here, Nirvana was originally regarded as the state in which all illusions and desires, as well as the cycle of birth and death, are, death are uh, extinguished, right? Man, listen. Now we have Judaism, right? You know, Judaism, they are heavy... Heavy critiques of Christianity, calling Christians pagan worships and worshippers and all that type of stuff, right? But okay, let's find out the difference between Buddhism and Judaism. Okay, so it it is our essential to our it is essential to our understanding to practice, to, dang, to appreciate that the Hebrew word for repentance is teshavua, tesha, tesh, tesh, ha, <clears throat> which literally means, which literally means to return to God. Most people are not completely evil or completely good. God does not expect perfection or he wouldn't have provided repentance as a way of returning to him. Right. God's message of love and compassion is return to me, says the Lord of hosts. And I will return to you. Right. This is an invitation from God to return directly to him without the need for an in in intermediary to help us <clears throat> listen i went to public school so chill out um this personal and direct relationship with god is within everyone's grasp right for this is the commandment which i command you this day it is not too hard for you neither is it far off it is not in heaven that you should say who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it to us and make us so all right so we're gonna get to it right here because they highlighted it 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 is within your close reach to serve god in your mouth and heart to do it is very clear and distinct they said language king solomon summarizes how we should live our life in service of god saying the end of the matter all having uh been heard be in awe of god and keep his commandments for this is the whole man and they say, look right here, editors know this is yet another example of the difference between Judaism versus Christianity. Uh, we know they're literally saying you can attain this by the things that you do by just re re repenting, 
by just repenting that's it you just repent and you 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 i guess live a life pleasing to god you keep his commandments but it's like um who's gonna atone for your sin though is the question that's my question who's gonna atone for your sin and look this is literally telling you it's by how you live how you're gonna inherit the kingdom now now we check out hinduism generally all living beings including humans and beasts go to yamas abode upon death where they are judged however various virtuous beings are taken directly to Saravagwa Sa to heaven People devoted to charity, especially donors of food, eternal truth speakers, are spirit justice of Yama's court. <laughs> so, devoted to charity, doing good works, especially donors of food. So, everybody could sin, make a mistake, but you doing enough good in Judaism, you follow the commandments, you doing enough good in Hinduism, you good. Let's check out Islam, I won't hold y'all longer, but the Quran, right? Specifies the qualities for those who are allowed to inhabit Jannah, right? According to the Smith and Hadith. Okay, so um, those who refrain from doing evil keep their duty. <laughs> Have faith in God's revelation. Do good works. Are truthful, penitent, heedful, contrite of heart. Those who feed the needy and oh, do y'all notice what's going on here? Do y'all know this? What's going on here? One is saying you go to the Goku. One is saying you you do good works. One is saying you keep his commandments and how you live. The other is saying just like it's borderline the same thing. Are we understanding what's going on? I have to share this because it's like you never know who's gonna come across the video and you never know who don't comprehend all right what is the exact difference between christianity and all these religions i don't know there are people who don't know so what happens look what the bible says mm. for by grace ephesians 2 verse 8 for by grace you have been saved dude matter of fact, let me highlight this clip right here let me highlight this clip you know what i'm saying for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, least anyone should boast. Do y'all see the prior religions? Mm -mm, somebody's lying. Somebody's in trouble. Oh. And then we read Romans 4 and it talks about, look, 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 look at this. Look at this. For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. Right. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him as righteousness. He believed. Right. Notice what King David said, how he describes this. Just as King David also describes the blessedness of a man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from works. So, my friends, this may seem irrelevant to the video of Sam Shimon, but it's not. Again, like I said, you never know who's going to get to this point of the video. You never know what people are thinking, what they're struggling with, what they're trying to figure out. Gotta share the gospel. Sam Shimon, what he's doing is showing people, bro, you can't save yourself and your good works ain't going to help you. Now, he has to go into detail and do all of that. That's why I, I can't do what he's doing. I don't care. I want to get to the crux of it. How are you going to get to heaven is my question for all these other religions. What is the difference between Judaism, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism? The ideology may seem different, but it's really not. They're all looking to themselves while Christianity is saying you're not good. There is none good, right? There's none good. And it's a gift, not of us, least any man should boast, right? But when it's telling you, you got to do, you know, food or this and that, man. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. May the grace of peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be upon Sam Shimon and everybody who, not everybody, I'm, but may it touch people that really need saving. May this video touch and open the eyes of people who are seeking. And let the Lord will be done. Let me know what you think about this, my friends. Comment below your thoughts, uh, especially, especially about that wild situation with uh, Sam Shimon. Like, I wish we caught, caught that on video, but it's crazy. I love that some things are just not meant to be caught on video not everything like 
we see everything. Like if I'm having a conversation with certain people in person, I'm never going to put it on YouTube unless somebody else does it. But I'm not going to do that. All right. I'm going to do this. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I want those to be more intimate. We, 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 we vlog everything like some things I feel like could be a more personal. You know what I'm saying? I'm not condemning anyone who's doing it in person. I'm just talking about me. <laughs> That's it. Just me. But my friends, I love you. Take care. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Shalom, my friends.